I am Keynes Woods and you're watching Studio One. So first things first, I want to thank you for coming to Studio One. Right, like it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I know we spoke like August 2018 yeah. when you were releasing records and that was the first time we met. So it's been like a good while. Yeah, so, it's been a minute. Yeah, so uh, I just want you to introduce yourself. Uh, Keynes Woods, artist um, out of Ottawa, living in Toronto. I'm originally from Congo. Um, but yeah, it's me making music. Yeah. Whatever. So, the first thing I want to talk about is, as you said, you grew up in the Congo. Just talk about what it was like growing up there and just how your life was, opposed to when you would eventually move. Talk about like early life. Um, I was there for I was there for eight years, so like the first eight years of my life. So I don't remember like too much. I don't remember like anything super bad though. Like, I was pretty sheltered in that way. Um, so, like, I remember just, like, being a kid, mostly. You know what I mean? Um, I guess coming here, obviously, you get introduced to, like, the cold, cold weather and whatnot. And, like, um, yeah, like, more white people, obviously, you know? Yeah. But, like, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, just, like, the culture shock. But, like, yeah. Yeah. And talk about, like how you first kind of got introduced to music. Uh, what was your family like in terms of music, in terms of the songs and artists and things that were around you? How was it like that? Um, like, how was it introduced to music as a kid? So like, what yeah, it, like, like maybe you're like your parents or siblings. Like, what were okay. the kind of music that was surrounding you or if anyone well, played instruments? Yeah, my, my dad always had instruments in the house. Um, so he got like all of us in the piano really young. That's not like something I stuck with, but like I guess that was like the first introduction to music. Um, my sister would listen to like I guess all like the top songs from that back then. So like she had a huge crush on Craig David and like um, Justin Timberlake. So like like growing up, like that's most of the music that I was playing it was like from my sister. Um, yeah. Were there any artists that like you were kind of navigating towards, or it was just still and, kind of a? Yeah, I didn't start listening to music until I was in like sixth grade. Yeah. That's when you got you get like your first MP3 player, like the, you know, like the classic ones. Um, obviously, like like, fucking Chris Brown, like, who else was popping at that time? I was a big like Tupac fan. That was like my first like rap. But, like, honestly, before, like, even listening to rap music, I was into, like, R&B mostly. So, like, R. R. Kelly, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it's hard, it's hard to be a fan of R. Kelly, but, like, yeah, that was, like, the first... Uh, gateway into, yeah. Gateway, gateway into and music. And I know, like, for anybody, like, moving is, like, tough no matter what. Like, whether you're going to a new school or you're going to a new city, let alone, like, a, a new continent new country so when your parents told you we're moving uh talk about how that affected you and like impacted you were you like upset and angry and like when you eventually realized you were moving like how did living in ottawa in the beginning like work for you um yeah again it was just like a culture shock and it was just like oh like why you know what i mean like why are we moving as a kid you don't understand like the bigger picture like you kind of just like live in the moment so I was like, okay, well, like I'm a kid, like this is cool. Like why do we have to move literally to like yeah. the other side of the world, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, getting here, like you make friends quickly. It's like the streets are cleaner. You're like, oh, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I, especially being a kid, like I adapted pretty quickly. So it wasn't really a huge issue. It was more just like at first, like why? like. Life is fine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where are we moving? And there's like something to touch upon that I feel like me and you definitely like relate to. Like when yeah. I grew up, I grew up in North York in the neighborhood, like a centralized like neighborhood. And mm. like going to school, I was kind of like, either there's a few black kids that are in the school, or maybe yeah, I was like, yeah, before, yeah, yeah. I was like the only one yeah. certain thing. And I definitely felt that throughout like elementary school, middle school, and like, and like my high school. But like for you, like living in Congo, then going to Ottawa, yeah. like talk yeah. about talk about that because I know like that's a unique experience. Yeah, it, it's definitely definitely an interesting experience. 
Luckily, though, I went to um, a school called TASOC, right, where, like, my dad put me in a private school. It was a school built for, like, mostly, like, American students. It was an American school in Congo um, that they built for, like, um, so it was, like, super rich kids, you know what I mean? So kids who, for example, are in Congo because their parents are working in, like, for like the UN or like some yeah, shit. Yeah, my friend actually, uh, similar, yeah. Yeah, so like, I did like grow up around like a lot of like white kids even when I was in Congo. Like I was like introduced to like shit like Hallow Hall Halloween, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. like shit like that because they keep it very American in that school. So I just like knew and understood the culture a lot more. Um, but I wasn't used to being like the only black kid in yeah, the class, exactly. you know what I mean? So like coming here, like like grade three being the only one or two like black kids in the class, just kind of like kids want to touch your hair exactly. and like shit like that, it's just like weird, super weird at yeah. first. Because uh, to touch on that, because like Toronto is such like an amazingly like multicultural city and there's so many different backgrounds, but I do think like when you are like in when you go to like certain schools or in certain areas, you can you, be the only like black kid in the school. And for me, like I've yeah. I felt that too. I just definitely wanted to get your touch. Yeah, you know, it was kid. like that from yeah. I you know exactly how it feels, yeah. bro. It was like that from like grade three when I moved to like I want to say like grade maybe nine nine and ten. Like I moved to Orleans, which is like like the suburbs when I was in grade nine or ten which was like mostly, mostly white people again. So like in every class, like you'd have like, now you, now you got three black yeah. people, you know what I mean? So we upgraded, but like, it was still like majority like white. Um, but I managed to like find, find a group of friends who were, not that I was even like looking for like, yeah. black us to be friends with, but it was just kind of nice to like be around like more black people, Yeah, definitely. you know? Just cause like, yeah, it gets kind of like isolated. It's just different. Yeah, it's different. It's hard to explain. But exactly. It's just that's different. why I, I I can I can exa that's exactly why I wanted to ask you because I can I feel the exact same way. So you go to Ottawa and talk about not only you, like you starting to have pre appreciation for music and you're kind of like starting to craft songs. Talk to me about how the transition from okay, like I like music, I make music for you to be like this is what I want to do. Was, okay. there, was there a moment where you're like, okay, like this is something I'm gonna do? Okay, I mean, I didn't make I didn't make music until like pretty recently. So I haven't I haven't been making music until like three years ago. Okay. Three three years ago, about. Um, I didn't really think about music in any type of way, like for a very long time. You know what I mean? So like. Early introductions, like grade six and whatnot. Like when I did get the MP3 and I'm listening to music, it was just music, you know. Yeah. Um, me and my brothers used to like when we discovered rap music, we used to like freestyle all the time. So we'd put on like a Rick Ross type beat, and just like freestyle, you know. And then once I moved to um, St. Pete's, it's like people would do like freestyle battles and like and, like stuff like that. I was like, yo, this is kind of cool. So like in grade ten, I tried. Like, I just took, like, a Kanye West beat, a Good Life beat, and, yeah. like, I made, uh, if you're familiar with, like, Audacity, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I recorded, I recorded on Audacity, and then, like, I showed my boy Jeremy, I was like, yo, yo, bro, this is about to go off. This is bro, hard. Bro. This is hard. <laughs> I put it up for, like, I want to say a day or two, not even a day, and I just took it down, I was like, you know what, fuck this, I'm not doing it. It was yeah. just, like, I was just, like, scared like extremely scared of what people would think you know like I just super self-conscious about it and I didn't do anything with music until like three years ago when I was just like you know what like let me just let me just try yeah. let me just try it let me just try it out you know and like I made something I was like oh fuck yeah this is dope this is it right there. put it up I was like this is good that's gonna blow uh, didn't blow you know what I mean? But got some like decent feedback and I was like, you know what, let me just let me just try again. Um and then from then on it was like a constant like process of like, yo, this is fucking it. Yeah. Like every single track, yeah. like like the first like five 
six tracks that would come out that'd be like, yo, this is fucking it. Yeah. This is going. This is going. And it's just talk constant. about talk about well, like what you said. I think is really important. Talk about like the vulnerability of being like a creative because I know you probably have peers or people that you've seen that like have a ton of music yeah. but they're afraid to release it because of the reception that they might get yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. like you can be really talented and have like really amazing music mm-hmm. but like you might have like a fear in the way things are like perceived Yeah. and like talk to me about how important it was for you to like kind of recognize that in, in your in, in like inside mm-hmm. and like come to the realization that like no I'm gonna release music cause there was like a vulnerability to that yeah um I think man that's that's an interesting question like at first it was like such an like just an excitement of like yo I just made something super dope and I want like everyone to see it you know what I mean um but then once you start getting like some reactions you start like thinking about like other shit and I feel like you just have to bring yourself back to like that excitement yeah. of like hey I made this and like I think it's dope which is why I want everyone else to see it there was like a quote I forget where I seen it but it was like it's not creative until it's shared with people you know yeah. what I mean something can't be considered creative until it's like shared with with people you know so like like I feel like no matter how far away you go from like like when you start overthinking you just gotta go back to that point of like yo like this is meant to be like shared with people and that's something like even like till this day like like it's gotten like progressively like harder you know what I mean like yeah. like when there's more like I feel like not necessarily people are like counting on me but like I, I don't want to let people down you know yeah it's like I don't make music for myself. Like I like I make it for people to enjoy. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, it's like if I make something and I feel like people won't enjoy it, then you know, like yeah, it's like, like a it, constant it, a constant battle of being creative because like when you get like when you start creating things, you create it from like this like joy, and then when people kind of like creep into your creative world, it kind of yeah, gets, it like, gets corrupted. Different. And like again, like it really comes down to like the way you think and the way you do things and. At times, yeah. like, people's thoughts can like intercept that kind of thing. Yeah. But so, in terms of releasing records, I know like Ottawa as a music scene. I remember when we last talked, you said it wasn't like quite a scene, or there wasn't like it wasn't big enough of a city. And you said like using the internet to connect mm-hmm. was something that you used. Can you touch upon how like important the internet was to you in terms of just connecting with people, and especially yeah. like, your managers is how you connected too. Yeah, um, internet is. is freaking huge you can connect to like anyone at any point like just you could try hitting up like jay-z right now yeah like, you can slide into jay-z's dm exactly. like he might not respond but he's not gonna respond but at least like but it's, like you know how powerful like, it is, yeah. yeah you can shoot your shot at anyone so like the internet's been huge for me in terms of connections it also is, also makes it like really hard i feel like there's like so many like expectations now to like do things that I personally don't feel super like comfortable with um it's like like I like I don't feel super comfortable with like for example just like hopping on and like talking every day just being like yeah hey, yeah this is yeah I'm, I have a Jabril interview bro today like the constant showing the, of con- face. the constant showing a face I'm like like realistically at this like I just don't I don't have like the energy for it and like I just hate that it feels like it might have to be part of the job yeah but to me it's like I don't necessarily think it does you know what I mean um like I've kind of come to like the realization I'm like okay well if I don't think it does then I have to like prove that it doesn't and maybe even like open up like a lane for people who who think the same way um but yeah, the internet is like a blessing and, and a curse. I, like, I think it's a blessing in the sense that we're so connected with everyone, but like, I don't think it should be the end all be all of how you can, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, like make exactly, because I feel like what you're saying is like, you shouldn't need the field to like compromise yourself or your vision. Because, yeah. Because I yeah. feel like, as you were saying, like creating your own lane, like when Tyler the Creator went number one with Igor, he did it 
making the music that he liked. Making the music that he liked, and how he wanted to exactly. do it. Exactly. And, and for him, like, I look up to him because he, like, inspires me, because he shows me, like, I don't need to do, I don't, I don't need to put on the show yeah. that a lot of people put on. I could do what I want, and I could find success in it. Yeah. So, yeah, to your point, like, you should stick to what you know. Yeah, stick to what I know. Exactly. And we, I, that's the thing we've been, we've been trying to figure out, like, as a team. It's kind of like, like, I was talking to my managers about it, and they were just like, yo, um, we've kind of came to the acceptance that you're not going to be, like, the fucking outgoing blah, yeah. blah, blah, social media dude. So now it's like, how do we, how do we work with you? Blah blah. blah. You know what I mean? And I was like, I was like, all right, thanks for coming to that realization. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, but we came to the conclusion. It's like, okay, well, if that's how you're gonna be, um, then like, you have to be super focused on the music, and the music has to be undeniable. Which is one of the things I said in, um, I don't know if you, you read the title interview I did, but it was like, like the title of it was, yeah. um, Kane's is some, something like to make undeniable music. That's my goal. I want to make like Drake level undeniable music. You can dislike Drake. You know what I mean? But like, it's like, there's no argument. There's no, made, there's yeah. no argument. There's no argument that his music's undeniable. Um, and like that's like I haven't reached that peak yet but I'm working towards that um, so when you see Kane's not like talking for like a fucking year I want like I want my fans to get accustomed, accustomed to like okay like he doesn't talk or like he does he does he's not like that out here but like when he drops like we can't deny that the music's undeniable yeah. the visuals he put in so much time on his visuals they're undeniable like that's kind of what we're trying to get to so, it's like I want to curve like, like that, that that lane for yeah, myself. I, I feel yeah. like the artists, respect. the artists that like I look up to are like those artists that like do that. And of course, like there's a luxury to it. Like some artists like they've stayed true to themselves, so they're allowed to like leave for a while and then come back. Mm, yeah. Like, like you have you like, have to earn it. You have to earn it though. You have the Adele yeah. where she can vanish, or like a Lord who can vanish, or like yeah. the Weekend who can delete his social media but then come back and it's as if he never left. Yeah. But I feel like you have to plant the seeds for that. Mm -hmm. So like if that, those are things that you're aiming for, I think like, of course there's, like you said, like the, the, the push and like having to feel like you need to be out there. But like it's important to like really do know like you don't, you really can. You stay, don't need, you don't, you don't need, need to be yeah. out there. But it's like the, the, the flip side to that is you don't need to be out there. But when you do come back, come with anything, yeah. you know what I mean. It's gotta be well thought out and like and like good. <laughs> it yeah. has to be like you have to. Like I said, you gotta earn. You gotta earn your peace and privacy. You know. Yeah. And like right now, I'm trying to earn my peace and privacy. I want to be a musician. I don't like care to be much more than that. Like I don't need to be. And that's like how you succeed in the long run. Like yeah. That's how you're an artist that has longevity because you're thinking long term. Yeah. You know, I think for the most people who like constantly post or like keep engaged, I think like, yeah, some people do. It works for them. But I think there's the burnout that I feel like a lot of artists do get. And yeah. I think it trickles down to like the creative work that comes to it as well. Yeah. Because like most of the I just feel like it's fickle too. Yeah. I just feel like it's fickle. And that's, that's kind of what scares me because I felt like. Like, you know, like, I've, I've felt a bit of a clout, and, like, I felt, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like I've, I've, I've felt it, and, like, I just want, I just want it to be, like, super solid. Like, I want to have a super solid career, and to me, like, like, it doesn't really matter anymore how big or how small the, the career is. I just know that I want it to be solid and I want to have like a genuine like real connection with people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I like I don't want anything fickle. Like I don't I don't want to be like a flash in the pan kind of thing. Yeah. Like I want it to be like real solid and like long. So it's And to the point of the internet, like we have so many like references of artists that have come and gone and like it allows us to like take lessons learned from it. But um, circling back on like growing up in Ottawa, so like when you were crafting like the songs and you were like recognizing like the scene out there, I know like Night Lavelle, he's from Ottawa and he's done like amazing things, but I think like other than him, like I'm like 
ignorant to the scene, so mm-hmm. I don't want to like. I feel like it's important too to like if you don't know something, you shouldn't like speak on it. So like Ottawa is still kind of foreign to me. Yeah. So, like, for you being there, like, it's a one thing to make music, but when you don't really have like a ton of artists from that city, it's hard to like have like references of like okay he he made it or she made it. So like for you like being there and making music, was it like hard for you to? really push yourself in that city or like how did you how was your perspective as an artist being yeah i was honestly it was like i was very naive which is which might even be a good thing it's like i don't know what's good or what's bad so i'm just gonna do whatever i feel is right you know what i mean so i didn't really know i didn't know anything but like i don't realistically people like like people weren't really jocking my music like that people don't really fuck with it so i was just like i i'll just do whatever i feel is right you know what I mean? And again, thanks to the internet, it's like people are gonna, from here, are gonna end yeah. up like liking you even if you're from here. So a lot of like attention that I was getting earlier on wasn't from anyone in Ottawa, wasn't from any close friend group. It was just like random internet people. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna keep doing whatever. And I moved to Toronto, just meet more and more people. It's like the scene works a lot differently here than it does over there. Um, but yeah, it was like, like, it was just like, yeah, I don't know anything, um, but I feel like I'm doing something right, so I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. yeah, I started making music around the same, same time as like Dax, I don't know if you know Dax, yeah. Dax from Ottawa, um, we're like, we're cool, um, and he's kind of like, he's also he's like a different type of blueprint different type of artist than I am but like I do look up to like how um what he's been able to do he doesn't really get enough enough love from the city but like super dope what he's been able to do he was here he was here yesterday he was here yesterday actually um but yeah so like like it's just all different it's different different ways to do it and I feel like like a lot of a lot of us from Ottawa have just kind of been finding our own ways to do it because there's no like system to go from yeah from through the city so like like you know people like him um just finding internet internet ways to like to navigate and shit is is dope mm-hmm. it's and cool. being in Ottawa too it must have been special I know you did the blue fest so yeah, yeah yeah so I know I interviewed uh garçons I know they're from Ottawa as well and I asked them about that too like how it's special to perform in your city in that type of festival talk about how like cool that must have been to do that yeah it was cool it was super cool that was like one of the first shows I did where like some people in the crowd like knew the lyrics already and I was like man that's like a that's a different yeah, type that's a, that's a different that's type amazing. of feeling yeah I was like these two girls I still remember it was like co- left corner you know what I mean? Yeah. And like knew the shit, and I was like, ah, yes, that's yeah. That was a different feeling, but um, yeah, no, nah, it, it was super dope. Especially like that moment being in Ottawa, like was was like really cool, because I was like, yeah, I, like, man, I always have this thing in my my head. It's like, man, they hate me over there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, like that was cool. That was dope. Yeah. Now going away from Ottawa. Now we briefly talked about Toronto. Talk to me about what it was like moving out here and connecting with the scene and the artists out here because like we have like a ton of artists and we have like so many things going on here talk about what it was like for you kind of like going around I know you've I know the song that you recently released Spiritual Healing has just drawn on it John, yeah. and Solo Key. Solo Key as well and he's from Vancouver too so yeah. I guess in two ways like talk about like just connecting with just John and how you've navigated with Toronto and on a second note talk about like Solo Key and the Vancouver and that side too it's like a amalgamation of like cities in Canada so that's really cool too mm. um I mean Toronto Toronto's been super dope like I just like I like the I like the scene here like a lot of people it's funny like a lot of people here are like yo like I'm I'm trying to move I don't really like the scene yeah and I'm like really like this scene's dope maybe it's because I come from like a smaller a smaller city so like this to me is big and they come from like a big city, so like, yeah, I'm trying to go to fucking New York. Yeah, New York, or like, LA. LA, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, to me, like, it's cool. Like, I got like my my guys from No Tourist. Um, like, yeah, like, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna bring that up later. Yeah, too, but yeah New Tourist as well. That's amazing too. Yeah, we can talk about that yeah, later. Sure. But um, 
yeah, like everyone here that I've met here is just like cool. I haven't had any like super yeah. bad interactions. Obviously, there's a few people I don't like, but that's just that's life. That's life. You know what I mean? Just like people from the scene that are whack. I'm not gonna call them out by name. Yeah, but you know, but, and that's the thing nah. is too. It's like <laughs> in Toronto, there's kind of like this feel where it's like it's like community driven and like we're all yeah. supporting each other. We all know. We all know. We all, know, we all like kind of know each other. Yeah, but um, I mean, it's very important to recognize too. Like, there are times where you might not like that person, and that's and totally yeah, fine. Like, and yeah, no, exactly. There's no issues to it. You exactly. Know what I mean? And but, there's uh, no there's no real issues to it. Um, but yeah, like like I haven't had any bad interactions, so like I I like the scene here. I think the scene is dope. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and so talking about, I know when I talked to you last, you had re- I think you, at that time you had released like four singles in twenty eighteen, and we were talking about like an EP, and you were saying how like you needed to get to a certain point before you felt like releasing an EP was like the next step. So I know spiritual healing. Uh, I think tentatively it's the single that's going to be released from the upcoming EP. Um, so talk about from the I guess from August twenty eighteen till now. Mm-hmm. Talk to me beyond like the records you've released and the performance uh, you've made. Talk to me how much you've grown as an artist, uh, and talk to me about this upcoming EP. Okay, um, this upcoming EP is like a combination of like tracks I've had over the years with Rec. It's like my main producer, yeah. um, and it's just like like one of the tracks is like one of the first songs I recorded like in Toronto at Rex Place, you know. So it's been like a long time coming. Just had these songs for like so long, um, and it's just like I guess we picked like the ones with like the the same vibe and whatnot, and just themed them out, um, created the whole Congo King like like cool aesthetic or whatever. Um, and they're hard, all they're yeah. all like pretty hard, hard hitting tunes. Like they're pretty dope. Um, in terms of like how I've progressed as, as an artist, like I feel like even now, like I'm I'm like ten times better than like the songs I'm about to release. So like it's hard to like. Yeah. Obviously, I'm gonna boost these songs. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they're fucking hard tracks. Whatever, they're dope. But you're growing. But I'm like I'm like growing constantly. So it's like it's in, it's interesting. Like I feel like I'm in a good position now, where we have like so many songs. You know what I mean? Like we have a complete project now that we're ready that's ready to go. Um, we got like songs behind that that we're like okay these are next. And then on top of that, I'm doing some growing art like as we speak right now of like yeah. okay like you know what I mean like refining like certain things um, and whatnot. But this project is gonna be super hard, and I think it's like the necessary, like step, um, like in my career again. Like everything's like really planned out for me. You know what I mean? Like like um, everything's pretty calculated. And uh, talk to me too about like the visual components, cause like your videos are like very like specific, and they're like yeah, they're yeah. really like cinematic, and they're like there's art to it. Yeah. So talk to me, cause like again like. As an artist, there's like performances and there's releasing songs, but like an, uh, another important factor too is like music videos. Mm, yeah. And I can definitely tell like that's very important for you to get out your vision. So mm, yeah. talk to me about how you approach music videos and how it helps you represent like your songs. True. Um, I mean, a lot of it is honestly not having like a crazy budget. Yeah. Like you're forced to like be creative. And I've been working a certain way since I started of like, okay, I'm going to work with like no money and I want to like make this happen you know what I mean and I like sometimes I'll start with like fucking crazy ideas and be like yo this is what I want to make happen kind of thing um luckily now like honestly leading into the project we didn't have any money yeah and then like we started making everything with no money and then like halfway through we got money and we're just like okay like we can build the business (laughs) we can we can build upon this so like that's what we're getting we're getting into now but like my yeah again like my visuals and whatnot it was a lot of like okay how can i make the craziest shit happen with like this amount you know what i mean and obviously yeah i've been very like picky with my aesthetic or whatever um people who know me know that i've made videos that i haven't released you know what i mean like i've taken money out of my pockets and like you know a lot of time to make shit that at the end of the day i was like you know what 
like nah this ain't it like this isn't up to par you know what i mean um and on that note you talk to me about how important it is to like invest and like spend your own money and it's you have to you have to do it because i feel like i think we touched upon it earlier just this idea of like having to like have this sort of like image or like having to push yourself out there and like people like see certain things but like there's so much to the back end like yeah. putting your money into this and like yeah, the yeah. amount of time that you put into this yeah talk to me about how like just the idea of how important it is to truly like invest in like getting your dream out there you know what i mean yeah you gotta invest like time and money you know um i'm in a position where i don't like have to invest a lot of my own money anymore which is like amazing. Yeah. Um, but man, like I've been, yeah, like I've invested like I've put a lot of skin in the game, I think, at this point. And I think like if you want it, like Exactly. There's some shit you're gonna have to do, you know what I mean? It's like you're gonna have to spend like your time your time and money trying to trying to make shit happen. And uh, yeah, so yeah, talk to me about uh, no tourists. And no tourists, yeah, man. It's just a whole bunch of talent. That's, what, that's what that is, man. It's just a lot of talent. How did it uh, come together, and things like that? Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty natural. Like we all did. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with with Outer Line. Yeah, I am. Uh, Connor, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like Connor and I'm like we all did. We all at one point did a show for Outer Line. Yeah. Um. So they invited us to the studio a few times, and we would go to their studio and just work on songs and make music and it all happened like really organically you know what i mean it was just like just in the house making music and we're like oh like let's make a tape you know yeah. and um ended up making a tape and then someone lost a hard drive or whatever with all the songs on it so like that tape got like gone. that tape's gone um so we had to like restart a tape um, but yeah, we're dropping. We're dropping uh, something soon. I think we're dropping a song like tomorrow, and then dropping a uh, Christmas tape like in a week or two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like a lot of cool guys, like like super genuinely genuinely good guys, like um, uh, super talented too, um, coming together to make to make music. Like it's dope. Yeah. Wow. And um, I'm. Not entirely sure, but I think you're born in 95, right? 95, yeah. yeah. Me, me as well. Uh, for me, like, for the past, like, couple of weeks, it's been dawning on me that, like, I'm about to turn, like, 25 in February. I don't even say it. Yeah, so, like, to the point of, like, the idea of, like, next year being a new year and it being a new decade, but also there's, like, this, like, existential, like, by the time you're 25, like, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. dawning on me, and yeah. I'm, like, to the point of how I was telling you how, like, you really can do things on your own time and you can relax. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about just the idea of like what turning 25 means to you and the idea of like the new year and the new decade. Like how do you see that for yourself? Yeah, 25 scary, 25 scary for me. Honestly, I'm like, I'm not even gonna front, like I'm kind of scared to age. Right. And I do feel like a certain level of pressure. Um, so like when I was talking about um, I think I mentioned like not wanting to let people down kind of thing. That's like a big thing of mine, you know? Like I feel like there are people who like super believe in me, you know? And like, I feel like I'm kind of like pressed down with like expectations now of like, yo, like, I, you know, that, time, that time's coming, come on, you know? And it's fucking, like that shit is difficult. It's, it's scary, you know what I mean? Um, and like I don't have like all the answers, um, but it's just kind of a thing of I guess like, like I don't know, keep, just keep just keep going. I just I just know that like in like in terms of music and like stuff I want to do, like this is what I want to do, you know. Um, so this is what I'm gonna I'm gonna work work for. Um, it's just I'm at an age where I need to make money yeah. <laughs> yeah. at the same time so it's like however I can make money on the side or whatever to like continue doing this until I'm able to sustain it is, is what I'm is what I'm gonna do you know what I mean yeah. um, if I get low on peas and I gotta fucking work at Booster Juice I'm gonna work at Booster Juice you know because this is what you wanna do this, no is, what I, this is what I wanna do at the end of the day you know and I'm not really good at anything else like I'm like Man, I was talking to my boy about this, like, bro, 
I wouldn't be able to become like a manager at like like McDonald's or like anything. Like I'm not, I'm not cut for it. Like I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah, know? no, no, that's that's <laughs> no real. Because like even for me, like in in this creative space, like people are kind of like. So do you have like a plan B? And I'm just like, no, because like if this yeah. doesn't work, I don't know what I could do. Like this is yeah, like yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's it, hard. Yeah, it's, like it's instinctively, hard. it's like, it's like, and it's an important thing too for me. Like r- like this past year, like recognizing like how I've like pressured myself and like how I've like made my like mental health worse and like how I like push myself because yeah. there is like the idea where it's like putting it in your head like this is all I can do. You know. Yeah. There, it's, to, to a point that it can be like a detriment to your own health you know what I mean so I think it's true I mean I just feel like it's a detriment but it's also like kind of what we need right it's like this weird you know? like paradox like, yeah yeah it's kind of what we need like it's like if you're not thinking like that like how are you it's like that's the drive right that's the dr- that's the drive yeah and yeah yeah I guess we pro- program ourselves to just exactly but I, but I, do, <laughs> it's a hard one. It's tough. It's but tough. I, but I do think though, in terms of just like entering the new decade, if like things that I've been telling myself is like, you really can take your time. And I know like there's when there's the internet, and you're seeing all of these other what other people are doing, and like seeing how quick things are. I and, disagree with that already. But I'll let you finish. No, your I'm, I'm saying like, you really can take your time, and like. It, and I know there's the idea of like having the thought of like this needs to hit, this needs to hit. But like in terms of like longevity of it all, I think for me, like in turning 25, it's just like I think for our generation, there really is like this like in, the pressure on us to succeed a lot faster than any past generation. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, of course, this is my own perspective. I feel yeah. like for me, like I need to like take a breath and like relax and like again like all not only enjoy what i'm doing but also like continue to have that drive yeah and i think instinctively it's like i can tell you all of these things but like you you yourself you yourself have to be like the mechanic in like driving that so like, yeah yeah how, how would you how would you see that yeah i say it's just, there really there really is no real answer there's no real answer and we're all just trying to figure it out at the end of the day you know like even people telling you to figure it out are literally trying to figure it out exactly. themselves. So it's just weird. But I just think it's different, like, especially, especially when you're an artist. Like, when you're a face, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, my face is a business, you know what I mean? Like, at least I want it to be. Yeah. Um, it is. My face yeah, is. It a, is. Yeah. My face is a business, you know what I mean? Like, like. I am a business, so like everywhere I walk, I'm representing that business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's it's like like the pressure of like getting old and doing this for a long time is that like people lose belief Themselves or or they lose belief in yeah. like that the business, you know what I mean? So like the more people see me at working at um what's it called? Booster Juice or wherever are gonna be like, whoa, that's a failing business, you know? What I, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So like, with the age thing, that's what kind of scares me when being like an artist, especially because I'm not a, a behind the scenes dude, or like I'm not like a videographer who's like trying to get his shit off, or whatever. Yeah, I'm like a walking, like talking business, you know what I mean? So like, like that pressure. I feel like is a lot different yeah, no, I, than I totally, like anywhere else. Yeah, I mean even any for other me, field. Like, uh, sorry to cut you off. I even tell him like Mike who films the show with me like all the time. Like as much as like I'm on camera and like I'm and like this is what I feel like I have to do. Like a, a large part of like me recognizing how I can take step backs is like the idea of just like being behind the scenes and and like not having to really show face because mm-hmm. there is a lot of pressure and like when you're an artist like again when you're seen and you're out there there's like a circling back there's a vulnerability to it no matter yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. and like the crazy thing is too like I interviewed this artist named King Princess and I was like telling her like isn't it interesting how like as an artist you're the ones putting yourselves out there kind of and that's why I always talk about the idea of vulnerability because like the average person doesn't really recognize like what an artist actually goes through behind the scenes Yeah, they, they, just, they just see like 
oh, you dropped a song and it's doing really well, and like, oh, yeah. like, oh, you're not really posting, so I guess things aren't going well. They don't, yeah, they don't yeah. see how damaging it, things, like how up and down yeah. this really is. So yeah. like, it's like you don't have like the free range to just like figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like people are watching you while you're figuring it out. People like, like I said, people themselves were trying to figure their life out and shit. Are telling you like how to figure and they have your like a shit standard out. and they have like a standard for the way of, like, you should conduct yourself exactly and it's just kind of like fam like i don't like criticize your path yeah. on like how you're getting to how you're supposed to you know what i mean like yeah. i don't criti- i don't criticize it or like i don't look at you any type of way because you had to take two extra years of uni mm. to to do this or that you know what i mean it's like, but with this, it's kind of like, oh, wait, you're not posting, you know? Like, you, you haven't fell posted off or in. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? like, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> fam, like, I'm figuring this shit out, yeah. you know? Like, so, in a way to, like, uh, finalize, so I think, like, it's right now December 20, 2019. Yeah. So, given the way we're entering a new decade and a new year, I know it's such a far thought, but like in terms of like the end of 2020 or mm-hmm. even summer of 2020, what are some of your like current goals that you would like to accomplish? Um, um, I want my project to do really well. I think it will do well. Like the first single is doing, doing numbers already. So that's bless. Um, like I said, this is my last winter in the cold. Can't do it again. I cannot do this anymore. So by the end of next year, from next year on, I'm going to be spending my winters in either Los Angeles or somewhere warm. The sun. The entire winter. So that's like four or five months. Um, So that's one of my goals is just no more winters. I want to be a living, touring, working musician within like the next two years. Um, so next year, I'm hoping it's gonna be a big stepping stone for me. Um, there's a lot of like like pretty, like big things like planned for next year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want this project to do well. Um, I want the project to do what it's supposed to do, which is like get me to a next stage and then from that next stage next year, psh- who knows? Um, but yeah, that's 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 basically it. But right, no man. more no more winters. That's no more winters. Uh, again, man, I want to thank you to coming to uh, Studio One. Uh, it's been like an absolute pleasure to have you in here. Um, Thanks for having me. I think like just on a final note too, like I know I can't give you the advice that like switches things in your mind, but like all I can really say is like continue to believe in the music that you're making and try to make sure like you're in the best headspace to do what you want to accomplish because the thoughts negative thoughts can creep in but um if you just stay focused things will work out which they have been because you've been doing absolutely amazing so far so thank you just keep going man thank you all right man appreciate it all right man we're doing dope all right man that was a good convo man thank you studio one